Hello, my friends, and welcome to a journey of a few thousand years. I will take you on a safari through ancient Egypt, through the coins and artifacts dating all the way to 1500 BC over here, to Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt, to various Greek and Roman coins issued in Egypt from all the way in the 300s BC to in the 300s AD. All right, my friends, so let's get started. First, let me let you know who I am. My name is Elias Lovin, coin expert, enthusiast, and dealer in ancient coins. Site is trustedcoins.com. So let's just get started from the top left over here. So there's no particular order in this except in the numerical order that, you know, I was able to find them in. So I'm going to be showing you Greek, Roman coins, and then artifacts. I'll leave that for last. All right. So what is this coin? This coin is of Antonin, Antoninus Pius. And what's interesting about this uh, uh, coin is that this is the uh, very rare Leo Zodiac coin. You see on the description here? By the way, see this item number if you add an I to it, I66478, and go on ebay.com and search for it, you'll be able to find this exact coin for sale on ebay. So, the zodiac types of uh, Antoninus Pius is, are very interesting types and some of the most coveted types of the ancient Egyptian series. This uh, is a drachm denomination, it's a huge coin, 25 millimeters. And um, yeah, this is the mo most interesting of, of the types that Antoninus Pius made for of that series. There's also the other types that people like. Uh, those are the labors of Hercules. It might be also under the same emperor. Now moving on. Here we have a, a coin of Hadrian and Sabina. So what we have is Hadrian, the Roman Emperor, from 117 to 138 AD. Uh, that's him over here. He was a great lover of culture, and his temple, the Pantheon, uh, is the temple that he, uh, you know, fixed up and rebuilt, originally built by Agrippa, that still stands in Rome to this day. The main feature of that uh, Pantheon building is that it has a really beautiful oculus in the roof meaning there's a little hole that shines light through the, on the different niches uh, inside that temple, which got converted into a Christian church where a lot of um, um, different, um, you know, basically turned into a Christian building, and that's why I was able to survive the longest standing. And that's his wife over here, Sabina. So that's the interesting type of the, one of the interesting types of the ancient Egyptian coins is that they struck the double portrait types. I'm going to show you later a coin of Nero and his wife, Papaya. So we're going to keep moving forward. All right. Now we're moving on to an uh, ancient Greek coin. Under Ptolemy I, he was the first uh, king of Egypt. So here's the deal. Here's what happened. Alexander the Great and his army and his troops and his generals, they came and conquered Egypt. And uh, they founded a city called Alexandria after Alexander the Great's name. Ptolemy I, after Alexander the Great's death in 323 BC, he became the first uh, king of Egypt, and uh, he issued one of the coins in honor of uh, him being a general of his, in honor of Alexander the Great. Here he's wearing the headdress of an elephant, elephant skin headdress. So Alexander has been featured in some coins with the horns of Zeus Amen. And uh, he's also been featured as Hercules in various coins. So very interesting type. And why is this coin interesting? Why is this coin related to Egypt? Is because this coin was struck in Alexandria, Egypt. So on the front we have uh, Alexander the Great. And on the back we have Athena with a spear and a little eagle on the back. And you see Alexander the Great's name, Alexandro, uh, over here in Greek. So that's really interesting. This is the biggest silver Greek coin they issued, unless it was uh, for you know special occasions. Those are bigger and you know usually don't come around. So very interesting. This this is a very highly coveted type. This type of Alexander, very interesting. Now let's move on to Roman Egypt. So what's interesting about this coin is that we have a coin of Claudius. That's Roman emperor from uh, 41 to 54 A.D. 
And this emperor uh, is the one that was right before Nero. He married this woman called Agrippina, and she had a son named Nero. Uh, Agrippina poisoned this guy with um, a poison mushroom, I think it was. And then um, the, her son, uh, Nero, became uh, emperor. And um, yeah, very interesting. On, and this type is also interesting because on the back, it shows uh, one of his wives, Messalina. You see over here, Messalina, uh, standing, uh, you know, on the back of the coin. So very interesting types. The interesting thing, uh, thing about the Egyptian coins is that not only do they feature interesting portraiture types, but the reverse types are also interesting because they're significant specifically to the Greek and Roman go gods and the cults that they worshipped. So here we have another Antoninus Pius coin, so 138 to 161 AD. He was the adoptive father of Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius was the emperor in the movie The Gladiator. Uh, and uh, this is kind of interesting. This coin has a Canopus jar on it. Very interesting. By the way, below this uh, video is the link to the article with uh, pictures of these coins and also links to these coins for you to find them in my eBay store in case you wanted to buy them. So um, the presentation I have is probably the best. Now moving on to this coin. This one is definitely worth uh, a second look. It's none other than Cleopatra VII, uh, Queen of Egypt. She was the lover of both Julius Caesar and Mark Antony. So on this coin, this is a double type, double headed type of Cleopatra VII, Queen of Egypt, and her lover, Mark Antony. They were actually survived by their daughter named Cleopatra Selene, who became the queen uh, by marrying this um, king named Juba II, Juba II. So we have a portrait of Mark Antony, and we have a coin, we have a portrait of Cleopatra VII. You know, you, could, you couldn't make this collection complete without her. She is so historically important that it is uh, important to also note this is the highly coveted, um, you know, coin that I would say it's almost impossible to keep in stock because people love getting portrait coins of Cleopatra specifically. So here's an authentic ancient Cleopatra coin. Next, moving on to the next one. So this coin... So from around, th we got 300 BC, we had all the kings uh, named uh, basically Ptolemy. So the Egypt, when uh, it was conquered by the Greeks, it had a dynasty of Greeks. It became the Ptolemaic kingdom of Egypt. And on the front, they would feature Zeus Amen. You see, like, it's basically a head of Zeus, and he has this little horn. So one of the one of the types that uh, was issued by one of Alexander the Great's generals is uh, imagine uh, him the Alexander over here, but he's wearing this horn instead of the this headdress of the elephant. So that's kind of interesting. On the back is an eagle. So actually two eagles standing. And around in Greek it says uh, King Bas uh, King Ptolemy. So talking about a 200 BC ancient coin. Next. So what we have here is Philip the first, really high grade coin. Choice AU. This is almost mint state. The strike five five and the surface four five. That's really nice. So this is a really beautiful, sharp, high relief issue. Notice the strike. Notice the beauty of this coin. And on the back, what do we have? We have um, Harmonia. So that's a Greek goddess, and you're going to find out more about her in my listing. So this coin is kind of interesting. So what's interesting about this coin is that it's of the Egyptian king Ptolemy II, but this type is believed to have been issued in ancient Sicily. So we're talking about a Greek coin of the, for the Egyptian king issued in ancient Sicily. So... That's kind of pretty. You have the eagle on the back. You have another Zeus on the front. I think this time it's just regular Zeus because he doesn't have the horn. Laureate head of Zeus, right? You see? And that's kind of interesting. Next, we have a coin under Ptolemy II Philadelphos, 
with the queen Arsinoe the second. Very interesting type, very rare. So that's why it's being mentioned. As I took the top coins related to Egypt and Alexandria in Egypt, and I'm showing them to you right now. So this is an interesting queen type. Next, we have another friend of uh, another coin of our friend Antoninus Pius, the Roman Emperor from 138 to 161, 168 AD. So one other thing to note about ancient Egypt: ancient Egypt was the breadbasket of the Romans. Uh, the Romans uh, used the, the you know fertile plains of ancient Egypt to provide grain for the entire city of Rome, and they often gave it away for free in order to feed the population because they realized the uh, power of the mob and if you fed them and you gave them entertainment, uh, they would be happy to support you. So you got to do that. Also, you got to pay the troops well. Otherwise, they'll, you know, depose you and put another emperor in. So we have this guy on the front. And on the back, what's interesting about this type is that this is the personification of Isis Faria. The goddess, or you could say the goddess personifying the lighthouse of Alexandria, one of the great wonders of ancient Egypt. So there are a couple different types. So this one just personifies her. Notice she's standing right and she has a sail, like, like a sail ship, uh, like she's uh, guiding it right. And the other type, which I'll show you in a little bit, is that it has her and to the right it actually has the structure of the lighthouse. I guess that one is more interesting, but still, if you're collecting the lighthouse issues, this is definitely important to have as one of the types. So let's move on to this coin. So this coin is a Ptolemy II. We have a uh, second king of Egypt, circa 285 BC. But what's interesting is that it has the portrait of Ptolemy I. Really, the only way it differs uh, between Ptolemy I and second coins is that behind the ear for Ptolemy of one coins is you have the Greek letter Delta. You see where this little uh, speck of hair behind the ear over here, this little circle area? If you had a, a Greek Delta, that would be actually a Ptolemy one coin. This is a Ptolemy two coin with the uh, portrait of Ptolemy one. It was a common practice to use the ancestor's portrait on the coinage, even for later kings. And on the back we have the ego, with the king's name, uh, Ptolemy King, around. So that's kind of interesting. So what's interesting about this coin type, is, as you can see, is that this is a coin in the types of uh, Athens, Greece. But this coin was minted in the Near East or Egypt. What's really cool about this coin is that it's in mint state. And it's in the type of Athens. So... Imagine the Athenian owl, the ancient Greek Athenian owl, but being struck in the mint in uh, ancient Egypt or in the Near East. So, it is very close to the Athenian coin types. By the way, uh, that's going to be the next video I'm going to be making is, is about the Athenian coin types. So, that I'm going to show this coin again, but a lot more from the actual Athens, Greece coin minting. So this is very interesting. So notice how popular the Athenian owl coins were, that they were even being minted by their, their own types in the Near East or Egypt. So that's kind of interesting. Next, we have a coin with uh, Berenice II. This uh, Berenice is uh, basically Roman, uh, Romanized translation. Uh, but in Greek it would have been Berenice, Berenice the second, and uh, we have her portrait on this coin, and this coin is very, very rare. So she's the wife of Ptolemy the third. Very interesting type. Next, so here is a coin struck by Cleopatra, queen of Egypt. You know, lover to Julius Caesar, Mark Antony. A silver coin and it was struck in honor of the ancestors notice on this one it has the diademed head of Ptolemy one right so this is a Cleopatra the seventh coin with the portrait of Ptolemy one right but how do you tell the difference that it is under Cleopatra 
is that on the back it says, you know, uh, same as the other ones, Ptolemy Basileus. But you see this little uh, headdress of Isis in the left field, and you could also tell by these dates. So the headdress of Isis and these dates around the, around the fields could be researched and linked exactly to her coinage. That's how you're able to tell. And plus, these experts at NGC uh, Ancients uh, they um, you know found it to be of Cleopatra the seventh too and verified it. So that's very very interesting. So we're almost halfway, guys. I'm gonna continue on and hope you guys can enjoy some more of these coins. This collection took years in the making and um, to put the presentation together, put the, put the research together, it took a really long time. All right, so here's the type that I was talking about in, in regards to the Lighthouse of Alexandria, uh, also issued under Emperor Hadrian. So this coin, remember we have Isis Varia, and she has that billowing sail that she's like holding in her hands, almost like she's being like a ship. And she's being guided towards that lighthouse. You can see this coin over here, rarely, rare, highly sought after type. So this is one of the types that you want to get is the architectural types. For a lot of the Greek coins under the Romans, you have a reference called the Tari. That's often referenced. Um, <clears throat> I oftentimes put the reference number so you, you could actually research it in the book and uh, find similar examples and pictures of uh, similar coins in the books that are referenced next coin now this is another sought after type all right why is this sought after so we have Ptolemy the fourth Ptolemy the fourth coin and this is an a42 coin a42 means this is a 42 millimeter coin this coin is huge and it is freaking heavy look how heavy it is 70 grams so we have uh, a head of Zeus, Zeus Amen, right? And we have the eagle on the back with a cornucopia to the left. So this is interesting. And this is one of the more interesting types because uh, it is the larger size. So the larger size, sized ones are also more sought after. And you also notice on the slab, um, people like when they're collecting, get, getting this one with a star. It uh, shows, a, uh, you know, a special example that, you know, to be noted. This uh, the star is a notable example, basically. So that's a very attractive and beautiful coin. Now, let's move on to this coin. So on this coin, we have a Ptolemy I, uh, king of Egypt. So we have a general of Alexander the Great. And the founder of the Ptolemy, Ptolemaic dynasty of Egypt. And his portrait was used on, on the ancient Egypt coins all the way up until even Cleopatra. And on the back we have the eagle. So this is a very also interesting type. This is another sought after type. is the Ptolemy the first coins. And notice behind the ear, the little delta. See this little D, this little triangle? The triangle is a delta in Greek, so that's an interesting type. Now moving on to Hadrian. So Hadrian was uh, definitely an interesting emperor. He was an emperor during uh, a time period called the adoptive emperor time period. And instead of uh, putting their own sons in power, these emperors, they adopted the next succession of emperors based on merit rather than just familial ties that ensured actually for uh the roman people actually a golden age so you omitted a lot of the megalomaniacal tendencies that first century emperors such as nero caligula uh tiberius uh, that uh, they showed and it was a time of uh, prosperity this Emperor Hadrian, he traveled all around the empire. He uh, paid a lot of money for great architectural works. You could still see an arch Hadrian built in Athens, Greece. So that's a beautiful portrait of his. And on the back, we have Athena holding Nike. You could see Athena holding Nike and shield set on the ground. And this one's from 126 AD. What is Bilon? Bilon is basically a low... Uh, not a high percentage of silver, so we're talking probably between 20 and 50% silver for Bilon. 
but it's still a beautiful coin. It is sharp. It is uh, fantastic, and that's the, and that's how they struck him from that mint. Next, let's move on to this coin of Commodus. What is interesting about Commodus is he was the son of Marcus Aurelius, and he was the emperor featured uh, the megalomaniacal emperor that was featured in the movie The Gladiator. The gladiator emperor, uh, the old guy, Marcus Aurelius, that was his father, but like biological father. And instead of following the succession of adopting the best emperor for the rule, uh, he broke that and he put his son in charge. And this guy decided that he was the incarnation of Hercules and he started building statues with him as Hercules and putting them in Rome. There's a statue of him like that in Rome. Uh, you could see, and also he started putting himself on coins eventually as Hercules. So this kind of is kind of interesting. And on the back, we have what's called a Hermanubis, right? So what did the Greeks do? The Greeks wound up taking their uh, their gods and combining them with the ancient Egyptian gods, and that's how they got things like a Hermanubis. So you have Hermes. Uh, the Roman equivalent, Mercury, you see he has the Caduceus, and you have the Greek, uh, the Egyptian god Anubis combined together, and that's why you have Her Hermanubis. So that is what, one of the interesting reasons why um, studying the ancient Egyptian coins of uh, the Romans is interesting also because of the cult figures and depictions that, that are shown of the ancient cults on them, so... That's cool. Next, Nero, the emperor that fiddled while Rome burned. So Nero is an interesting fellow, to say the least. Uh, he raised the taxes during under his reign. The ancient uh, Jewish people revert, revolted, and you had the first Jewish Roman war. Uh, I think it was under him also that he debased them. Um, the currency, uh, he put lower quality of silver in it, so he was able to issue more coins. He built himself an amazing palace, and uh, outside of this palace, there was a huge golden, uh, like, you know, basically gold-plated uh, statue of Nero that was after the palace got reclaimed and uh, the Flavian Amphitheater, now known as the uh, Colosseum, was known for the golden statue that was standing outside of it because they rebranded the golden statue of Nero and turned him into the sun god Sol. And the, Col the Colosseum was actually the name after that golden statue because it was a colossal statue, like a colossus. Um, and um, yeah, so also he persecuted Christians. Uh, there was a great fire under him. And um, yeah, on this coin, what do we have? We have a veiled head of Hera, right? So that's the mother of the gods, a wife of Zeus, Roman equivalent of Jupiter. Next, moving on to Hadrian again. Interesting emperor, uh, belonged to Demeter, standing left. So that's the ancient Greek goddess, standing left. That's good that it's in the slab. Here's now the type of Nero. And... This coin features his wife, Papaya. See, it says in Greek, Papaya. And uh, this was from 64 to 65 AD. Uh, Nero was uh, kind of like kicked her when she was pregnant and she and her baby died. I think that was her. Maybe it was a different one. But uh, yeah. So here we have another Nero. So 54 to 68 AD. Here in the back, we have a coin... We have Zeus Olympios, right? So basically, Olympic Zeus there. We have a coin of Hadrian, another coin of Hadrian, and another Canopus of Osiris. That's the interesting type. So we're talking about 126 AD. How do we date them to 126 AD? Basically, you see this RY11, uh, how uh, the, the dates are given in... Um, basically in Greek on, on on these so so this one is easier to date you see over here this letter L L so how the date is here uh, so when it says year 30 
basically it means L for the year and L for the Greek year of what it meant in it. You see over here, we have uh, Selene, the goddess of the moon, and you have LL, so, so year L, which means year 30. So that's an interesting coin. We have a coin of Commodus here, dating from the reign of uh, his uh, father, apparently. Next, another Commodus. Another coin of Hermanubis. Next. So, this coin is interesting, all right? So, at this point, these coins are called Roman provincial coins because the Romans, it was the Roman province. They weren't up to the standards of the re regular Roman imperial mints. Um, the coins of the um, Rome were different from these. Rome did not struck did not strike tetradrachm coins. Tetradrachm is specifically a Greek area denomination. The ancient Greeks had tetradrachms, and the uh, areas in the east uh, didn't. But uh, the Romans, uh, they struck their own coins in, in Rome and had a different uh, value denomination. But by a certain period of around 280s AD, you see under this, this emperor, Diocletian, uh, you had a coinage reform and you had the, uh, it stopped being a provincial mint and become an imperial mint. Uh, striking uh, coins with the inscriptions in Latin instead of in Greek like over here. Here we have the inscription in Greek. Here we have it in Latin. But the mint of this coin is struck in the mint of Alexandria in Egypt. 301 AD, Diocletian. This is a beautiful coin in choice MS. Absolutely stunning. Look at that. So this is what the mint state coins looked like. Just like um, you know the previous emperors, in order to help along with their uh, money difficulties, they would debase their currency. So eventually, the silver, pure silver coins, or you know higher percentage silver coins, got replaced with bronze coins that got silver coated. You see on this coin, you have the original silvering. This is how it was, uh, as if it was uh, struck. So the value looked like silver, but to the merchants who knew what the silver count content was uh, was in there now, they just jacked up their prices for things. So this is what happens when you uh, raise the, um, you know, inflate the currency away. You start having to issue a lot more of lower than valued coins. Next. This coin is interesting because it's Gordian the third, and after him, the silver debasement uh, started uh, very highly after the next emperors. So, so we're talking about a 242 AD coin. So we're almost done, guys. Now let's uh, let's get to the home row, and uh, let me talk about some of these. So over here we have some very interesting artifacts. So. Scarabs like this were thought to possess magical uh, powers and they would, be, they would be worn as a necklace. As you can see, there's a hole going through the center. You see there's the, there's the hole? So imagine the, like you're an ancient Egyptian, you're walking around uh, with this uh, symbol and you're wearing it as a necklace. Very interesting. And this artifact, this scarab, is from 1572, 1075 BC. So we're talking about what? Three and a half thousand years old. Yeah, that's right, guys. You can own your own piece of Egypt three and a half thousand years old today. This one's kind of interesting, too. So what do we have here? We have this head. Uh, the god represented wearing a plumed headdress. So uh, late period. You see there's a hole to put it around. And wear it around. I don't know. I don't know if you want to wear artifacts, but once you own it, you could do anything you want with it. So uh, we're talking about 660s BC to 323 BC. 323 is, um, you know, when the first king of Egypt came into power, Ptolemy the first. We saw his coins with the delta and behind his ear. And we have another uh, steroid scarab amulet, 1570 BC. Look at this one. This one's kind of interesting. We have a hawk. And a cruciform glyph. That's absolutely stunning and interesting. Okay. 
This one's interesting. Okay, so these are raw coins that, you know, I didn't get in a slab. I provide a lifetime guarantee of authenticity, so you're welcome to get a second opinion from NGC if you like. Uh, but uh, each coin I present is going to come with uh, an info sheet like this and a beautiful certificate of authenticity that gives also my lifetime guarantee of authenticity as an expert that has worked with over uh, 70,000 ancient coins and artifacts and world coins and a whole bunch of things. So... Some people actually like the coins uh, raw like this. This is called a raw coin uh, because they can actually feel the history in their hand. And uh, there's really, uh, unlike uh, modern coins, which have like uh, these uh, shiny proof surfaces sometimes, uh, this stuff you could actually handle with your hands. Or especially you could handle it if it's, if it's your coin. So you could do whatever you want with it. So we have our friend Anthony and Spies here. And on the back, we have Triptolemus. So this god is kind of interesting because he was the god uh, that drove a serpent uh, wing, the serpent chariot. Uh, kind of like, uh, imagine Daenerys on her thing. It's, she, he spread seeds uh, across the land. And uh, he was responsible for the fertility of the land and the crops growing because uh, he spread the seeds around. So that's interesting. So here we have another example of the coin with Isis Faria, the goddess of the <clears throat> Lighthouse of Alexandria. The, it's also known as the Pharos of Alexandria. That's why it's Isis Faria. And we have the building to the right of her. And we have our friend Antoninus Pius on the front. What a champion. Next, this coin is interesting because this was struck under Ptolemy 12. Ptolemy 12, they really didn't freaking uh, come up with uh, new names for themselves. So they, they called themselves Ptolemy all day. So Ptolemy the 12, this was the father struck by the father of Cleopatra. And without him, we wouldn't have Cleopatra. So I'm happy to show it. I guess we do have the headdress of Isis on this one too. But uh, apparently, you by looking at the dates, you figure it out, and the reference books have all this information. So, um, it's a very sharp coin, very beautiful, high contrast. And this was dated year 28 of the reign, struck 54 BC. You see the dates? Bang. Next. This coin is of Vespasian. This was um, the Roman emperor that had to uh, start the war. The Jewish Roman War, um, when Nero, you know, got deposed, he was elevated by his troops to being a Roman emperor. He hurried back to uh, Rome to assume the title, and his son, <clears throat> and his son Titus, uh, wound up, um, you know, being the general alongside with him. He wound up defeating the Jewish peoples, and uh, the Arch of Titus still stands. To this day outside of the Colosseum. And the money from uh, that uh, sack of the temple. And um, the bringing back of the booty. Uh, of the treasures back. Uh, was part of the money that was used for building the Colosseum. So that's kind of interesting. Historically significant. So here we have another Zodiac series. Of uh, the ancient Egyptian coins. So th uh, this one is the zodiac series with mars aries uh mars and scorpio so i guess we have mars and scorpio so uh, it's either mars or scorpio or you could just give give it to either one this was uh this was uh, given this is our friend antonio spies on the front and very interesting coin over here we have an interesting coin over here with uh, Harpocrates being uh, cradled by Isis. Kind of interesting. Another friend of our Antoninus Pius. And this last one is very interesting because we have a mythical serpent on a horseback. So this concludes my video about ancient Coins of Alexandria, ancient artifacts. Uh, this collection has took it took um, years in the making, and um, it's available for sale. If not this, maybe some other things. Below is a link to, to an article where you could you are linked to those. 
So what you could do now is that you could visit my site, trustedcoins.com, for a link to my store. You could also sign up to my email, free email update list, list.trustedcoins.com, and you're gonna get great email uh, emails with videos like this one and other articles on other subjects, so you could get more educated about ancient coins. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed feeling these coins in hand and enjoying the history and the historical explanation. And um, give this video a thumbs up if you really liked it. So looking forward to, to dealing with you. And see you later, my friends. Bye-bye.